Welcome to the Mentor Podcast, where the most highly motivated entrepreneurs come to get their weekly dose of financial stability with host Ron LeGrand, as well as other nationally recognized thought leaders who will teach you how to get, grow, and protect your wealth. Well, welcome back. Uh, now we're going to go to the next lesson in our series of 32 fatal mistakes made by every real estate investor. Mistake number nine, you got to know your numbers. I can't tell you how many businesses that I've worked with that just have no idea what their numbers are. Um, you got to know what's a customer cost me? What's a customer worth to me? What's it costing me to get a phone call? What's it costing me to get a lead? Uh, how many leads do I, do I have to get in order to get a deal out of them? Okay, you got to know your numbers or you don't, or you don't have any uh, facts to base your uh, judgments going forward on. In other words, if I'm spending money on getting leads and I'm not getting any leads, uh, shouldn't I know I'm not getting any leads so I can quit spending that money, okay? And I got to know, what am I doing to generate leads and how much is, is that source costing me and is it worth keeping? And now uh, I get a home run, spend more money, kill the duds and move forward with the dudes. <clears throat> Break even, there's your list. If you want to take a picture of that, no, screenshot it, whatever. Got to be break even point. You got to know your break even point before the month starts, not after it's over. Uh, number of deals from each source, uh, revenue from each source, profit and loss on each property, uh, cash flow on each property, all easy stuff. You get these answers right out of your checkbook. Uh, and that's the way I suggest you do it. I don't want your accountant trying to give you this information. You have Pretty good sized bill is right there in your checkbook, <clears throat> right there in your checkbook and your closing statements. All right, number 10, don't use an attorney to close deals. Big mistake. Now, the kind of attorney we're talking about is a real estate closing attorney. All right, that's what they mostly do. A title company does not represent you. I don't know how many times you think I've heard, well, we use title companies where I come from. <laughs> well, so do I. Okay, but when I want a deal closed that has any ongoing relationship with seller or buyer, I want a uh, uh, attorney to close that deal. They represent you. Title companies do not represent you. In many states, a title company can't even close for you unless you buy title insurance, which is always going to cost you more than the attorney's fee. Attorney's fee is about five, six, seven hundred dollars. You'll spend more than that for title insurance on the cheapest property. And I don't buy title insurance on anything unless I'm paying cash for it. And then I will. So if I lived in one of those states, I'd have to pay for the title insurance policy to get a title company to close it. Well, I can get an attorney to close it cheaper. All right. So why would I want to, why would I not want an attorney? Attorney Attorneys are going to be there when you need them and, uh, you know, get in the deal and somebody wants to come after you for something that, uh, you know, they see an easy way to get some money back from me. You know, I want the attorney that closed the deal to be your witness if you ever had to go to court. I always get a title search, okay? But I don't buy title policies unless it's a cash deal because if I do a terms deal, uh, what am I at risk for? Maybe a few thousand dollars for closing costs. I'm creating a debt to the seller or I'm taking over a debt. I don't need a title policy. Policy for what? To 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 insure my $3,000? Nah. I can't tell you how many times I've wasted that money before I figured that out. <clears throat> title search, 100, 150 bucks. Title insurance, going to be hundreds. But I do buy a policy on cash deals now. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand what I just said. There's no way I'm going to pay cash for a house and not buy title insurance on it. Be foolish to close without it because we got a lot of money at stake. Whether it be your money or whether it be a private lender's money, you got to get title, title policy. <clears throat> And your attorney's going to push you hard to buy title insurance because he gets half the premium. <laughs> All right. Don't forget that when you get into these conversations. It's up to you whether you get title insurance or not, not up to your attorney. Um, my attorney charges $650 on any purchase and any sale or any lease option. And that's one of the things you need to get up front. You know, what are you going to charge me to do a closing and arrive at a fee so you'll know what your cost is going to be before you send anything to them? Your attorney is going to make sure you're complying with state and federal law. 
and you have all the documents and disclaimers and disclosures in your file uh, that are required by your state and federal law. That is their job, including my CYA letter. That's cover your assets. That's a letter that I created that the seller signs that says, I'm aware of all this stuff. I'm aware, I'm, you know, my buyers, uh, I'm not making, uh, it's not a loan. I'm, I'm not going to, uh, I'm selling a house. I'm not I'm getting a loan on the house. I understand that the buyer is going to make money and I'm not entitled to any of that money and I'm not on drugs and I'm of sound mind and I've sought legal advice, blah, 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 for a page and a half. All right? They sign that and boy, that, that piece of paper alone will relieve the pressure of you coming back after you and trying to claim you took advantage of them. Think about it. I got all these disclosures and then I got an attorney closing the deal. Do yourself a favor. Use attorneys. <clears throat> Because if you ever do get sued, uh, they're going to be your star witness and they're going to be the reason you win. And look at this. Never thought about it this way, I'm sure. One lawsuit. You could try to save attorney's fees for years and years and years. And one lawsuit could easily cost you more than you saved in all of those years. And by the way, when I put a tenant buyer in the house... I don't pay the 650. The tenant buyer pays it. They bring it in with their deposit and their first month's rent. The attorney is free. Why on earth would you not use one? Mistake 11. We're almost there for this session. Always prepare for court. And how do we do that? Well, you prepare for court by having attorneys close for you and then all, all the proper disclaimers and disclosures, and you're going to have the advantage. And again, remember, if an attorney closed for you, they're going to have that same stuff in their file. So you're, you're preparing for court means getting the documents so that it's very clear what the intent was and uh, that you didn't promise them anything and, and so forth. <clears throat> and then you are the one that has the upper hand because you are the one that has all the proper documents. And there's no such thing as an oral agreement. If it ain't writing... It ain't, okay? Get it in the writing. All contracts are adjudicated based on intent. Make sure yours is clear and backed up with ample evidence in writing. <clears throat> you don't need an attorney to get a deal under contract. So please don't try to be using this for an excuse. Now, I gotta have an attorney before I go get a deal. No, you don't. You need to get a deal under contract and then you can go to your, you send that to your attorneys and say, uh, is this okay here? Do you want to add anything or whatever? And get whatever you need signed, signed before closing. All right. Uh, trying to convince yourself that you can't do a deal because you don't have a, an attorney. It's just uh, a roadblock you're putting in front of yourself that is making it easy for you to not make the decision to move forward. Uh, friends, you are never going to find a business that doesn't require you to get uncomfortable with things you don't know and go through a learning process. Whatever that product or service is, you've got to do the same thing. It's no different in real estate. Okay, spend some time getting trained uh, and you're gonna get your best training by doing deals. <clears throat> of course, we got all the training you need to buy and sell houses with, <clears throat> but it's you that's got to make the decision uh, to do it. But you're gonna need more than one attorney, I hate to tell you this, your closing attorney deals with real estate closings, and that really should be pretty much all they do. And then if you, uh, you know, if you get into any kind of litigation, or even if you don't, you're going to need a business attorney to handle other things uh, uh, that uh, are going to happen along the way, perhaps. And then you're certainly going to need an estate planning and asset protection and tax firm to build your estate plan for you. Uh, you may not be worried about that right now, but uh, when we get a chance to talk about it, I'll show you how important that is so that you can build your estate so that you, if something goes wrong in your life, they're not going to come after you and take everything you own. <clears throat> Number 12, <clears throat> that's the last one for this session. You don't have any plan for asset protection, entity structuring, and tax reduction. In other words, you're going through life naked. You're allowing whatever happens to happen and you can lurk 20 years and all of a sudden something happens and there goes your entire life's work all in one lawsuit because you weren't protected. 
don't have any idea how many had these discussions that I've had with students over the years. And some of them where they lost pretty much everything and sometimes more than what they had. And all because they didn't take the time to protect themselves, which is your right. <clears throat> you really want to lose everything because of what you chose not to take the time to get done? Uh, well, and you're in the world of business now. Okay, you're not working on a job, swapping checks and so forth. So you're, you know, you're not doing anything that could really harm you, uh, anybody else. Oh, really? Well, that's naive thinking. The minute you get in your automobile, you're driving a missile down the highway waiting to kill somebody. You don't have to be in business to get sued and lose everything you own. You, you need to get protected assuming you're going to get sued and they're trying to get you everything you own. It's your responsibility to your family to build a legal fortress around your assets and take advantage of all the tax savings possible while you're doing it <clears throat> legally. Never own anything in your own name on public record. That's step one. The minute if somebody gets a judgment against you, and this includes the IRS, uh, 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 that immediately attaches to everything that's on public record. As soon as that judgment is recorded, it's attached to everything you own in your name, and you're an easy target for predators. Easy target. First thing you're going to do is search the records and see what you own. Your job, make sure they can't get it, even when they know you have it. Now, I teach a lesson. I call it the four LLCs. I'm not going to spend a great deal of time on this right now. But if you go to ronsgoldclub.com, you'll find that lesson. And here's the chart that I use that has improved, been approved by my estate planning attorneys. And it does involve four LLCs, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to scare you right off the bat. You don't have to have four LLCs to go buy a property. You don't have to have one LLC to go buy a property. All right. Uh, but it would take, it would do you uh, good to take time to go on the goldclub.com and, uh, uh, listen to this lesson so you'll begin to get it and then when i see you live in one of our events we're going to go through it in depth and you're going to have to go through it four or five times before you get it but the whole purpose of this is to put you in a position to where even when they know you got it you can't lose it and very very few people in this country uh understand this because they never take time to learn it you need to learn it you need to learn it even if you're not being doing real estate even if you're not running a business. All right. Now, if you're not a Gold Club member, here's your shameless bribe to get on there and become one. It's a lousy $59 a month. And you get a massive amount of goodies for that. And if you go on there and join, by the way, you can't get to these lessons until you join for $59. Bucks. Uh, quit anytime you want. Um, and if you do that today, and you mentioned that you got this from the 32 Mistakes Lessons. And uh, we'll give you 100 Gold Club points, which are worth a dollar a point. So in other words, anything you get from us from that day forward, you can use these points toward that purchase and get a discount. <clears throat> First 25 to sign up will receive 150 Gold Club points. And... Uh, if you, when you get the 150 Gold Club points, you cannot use them on the Gold Club itself, but any of the products and events we have, you can use them on. Um, one of the things I want to show you is, um, this is the homepage where it says FISBO Lead Service down, by, down to the left. You punch on that button and pick two counties that you want uh, for sale by owner leads from, and then you'll start getting them in your inbox every day or as often as they're listed on the websites in those two counties in that area uh, all you got to do is join punch on fisbo lead service and give them the two counties and it'll start coming to you and you'll see all these for sale by owners that list online are now drop right into your inbox 59 dollars a month you kidding that alone right there is worth five hundred thousand dollars a month <clears throat> And also, if you look there, you'll see a button called Resources, and that's where you're going to find all my forms and agreements for any type of real estate, residential and commercial, Canada and United States. And they're all labeled so you can get to them easily. And if you hit that Training button, uh, look at the search box up top. Uh, let's say you wanted to find that 4LLC uh, lesson I just told you about. You go up there and you type in 4LLCs, 
and here will come all that lesson and a lot of other stuff in that category. There are hundreds of hours worth of training on this site in modules, uh, and we continually put it on there every single week. Um, all kinds of other benefits there. There's a, a website already built for you to track private lenders and our calendars there, and there's a forum on there where you can talk to our, our other customers. So go there and do that. Listen, if you don't do anything, go to the Gold Club, get to be a member. It's $59 a month. You'll see why it's the best bargain in real estate today because it's a tremendous asset to you. And uh, incidentally, you can't hire one of our VAs unless you are a Gold Club member, uh, at least at the $59 level. See those gold points up there? Uh, every one of those points is worth a dollar. So she's got over 700 points at $700 just for being a member. All right, now this is new and I'm almost done, so I want to bring this to your attention before I finish. If uh, entity structuring, asset protection, and estate planning and tax reduction um, is of interest to you right now, we just taped a two-day course on this with Bob Bloom, who is the smartest attorney in this country that I know about this stuff. In fact, he works with a lot of my students all over the country. Uh, this two-day course was with him right beside me. And it sells for $14.97, but you can have it for $5.97 if you want it now. And you can use 50 of those Gold Club points toward it. So that's $5.47. Now, this is two days that cover every bit of asset protection uh, and entity structuring. I go through that four LLC plan that I showed you. Bob will show you why it's all reality. And you'll learn um, a lot of stuff about protecting yourself that you're not going to learn anywhere else. And this is all put into a very concise uh, course for you. Um, of course, it's all we deliver it to you online. And there's also a form in the back of it that you can fill out if you want. And just tell me what assets you have. Do you have businesses? Uh, I don't want any personal information. I don't need your social security number. I just want to know what you're structured like. And then I will uh, look through that and get back to you and tell you what I think you probably should talk to an attorney about to uh, fix the situation where you're at right now. Remember, you don't ever want to own anything in your own name. <clears throat> uh, that, uh, we don't have the number up there, so it's 1-800-567-6128. 1-800-567-6128. Uh, business hours, Monday through actually Saturday till noon. <clears throat> And you can even use the 50 points from the 150 I just gave you. Okay, so why not do it? 30-day uh, unconditional money-back guarantee. So um, how you own your assets, again, is the key to keeping them. You can't hide them. This offshore crap ain't going to help you. Stacking corporations on top of each other are not going to help you. Uh, but, uh, you know, I got the key that will help you. And I'm a living, breathing example of why it works. Uh, we will we'll teach uh, more of it on our business management school and our quick start school, but you can get that course right now uh, and it'll, it'll get you acquainted with what you might think you need to do as quickly as possible to get that process started. Then I got to wonder who's actually doing your tax returns and then I'm going to get very scared for you if I find out it's not a CPA. A CPA can save you a ton of money and frankly, no one should attempt to file their own tax returns today, even if they are a CPA. <laughs> They're so complicated. They get more complicated every year. And this is one gorilla you don't want to dance with. I mean, they're the largest collection agency in the world, and they have powers that no other creditor has. So uh, you, if you don't have a CPA now, I would start looking for them or one. And the first place I would go is to other investors who like the CPA that they're uh, working with. The CPA will file some much needed forms that you got to file. They'll help keep you out of trouble with the IRS. And, you know, you know, most people that came from a job into business don't even know that they're required to file a quarterly tax return. And if you don't file that quarterly tax return, you don't get penalized with penalties and interest because uh, the IRS ain't going to let you owe a bunch of taxes and think you're going to get through this year and not even worry about it till next year. They expect you to pay taxes this year based on what you think you're going to earn based on last year. And uh, how do you think I learned that lesson, incidentally? You don't want to learn that lesson. By the way, that caused me 
$10,000 last time just because it wasn't uh, filed on time, the quarterly reports. And there's other reforms that's got to be filed, so you need a CPA. They'll save you many times their cost. And the sad thing is you won't even know what they save you because you don't have one. I can tell you that my CPA saved me a million dollars one year, a million bucks. I um, had, After my fiasco in 2008 with all the commercial developments that I was doing, I had all these write-offs, and the next year, so I didn't uh, had the taxes to pay. So, so uh, next year, they wanted me to pay them a million dollars because of the stuff that was written off the previous year, and my CPA got a hold of them and politely pointed out to them the error of their ways because, frankly, he came from the IRS and uh, literally cost saved me a thousand bucks. Uh, that's how important a CPA is. By the way, he hasn't let me forget it yet, so um, that's okay. Um, um, a CPA can handle your, your your state and your federal filings and give you peace of mind and keep you out of trouble and keep you out of uh, penalties and interest. And uh, you do n in no way do you want to deal with the government directly, uh, especially the IRS. Your CPA is put in play. The minute you get a notice that you're going to get audited, you don't contact the IRS. You send it to your CPA. You let them handle it, and you probably will never even be part of the audit. Uh, and never assume that the IRS is correct just because they send you a late notice. As I sit here right now filming this, um, I just got an um, email from my CPA today. The IRS sent me a notice that I owe them 11 or $12,000 or something like that. And I said, what the heck is this? I sent it over to my CPA and he got a hold of the IRS and he got it quashed. Okay, 11 or 12 grand, just like that. I wouldn't even have known where to start with that thing. I didn't even barely remember what it was for. But the IRS will send you bills and send you statements and make uh, tons of errors. Uh, so you don't just say to yourself, well, my IRS, it must be true. No, it isn't true. It goes to your CPA. Let him or her decide whether it's true or not. Don't ever, ever, ever try to settle something with the government by yourself. Number 14, pay yourself first. You know, the most important expense in your business and at the top of the pile to get paid, not at the bottom of the pile. And if you don't take it out and put it in your personal account, uh, it will find a home somewhere else. And in other words, you're running a business that you're not getting paid for. You're taking all the money and you're putting it back into the business for some reason. And that's exactly what most people do, but it's not something you should do. Uh, I always say rob your business blind because very simply, if your business has a downturn and it's broke and now you're broke, you're gone. The cold purpose is while the business is generating revenue for you, take some of it out and put it in your own personal account. You know, act like it's a real business. There's only one purpose for having a business, and that's to make the shareholders wealthy. And that would be you. You can't leave all the money in the business. And and you will probably be loaning your company money from time to time. And soon you'll probably be lending back and forth from LLC to LLC because one of those LLCs is for your keepers, and one of those is for your flippers. Sometimes one of them won't have enough money and will have to borrow it from the other one. Uh, and um, uh, same is true for you. Uh, if you know if you, the money isn't in your account right now to to uh, take care of your business, you can always loan your LLC's money. But that's assuming you have the money, and you're not going to have it if you let it stay in there and get spent. And you're going to feel like you're getting nowhere because you are. The only purpose of a business make you rich. Don't forget that. Your business exists to furnish you the cash to grow outside your business and build your personal wealth. So if your business generates revenue, you take the money out of the business and you invest it in whatever you want to invest it in. And there's you know, a big long list that you can do. I'll tell you what I do. Um, even with my IRA, I use it to pay cash for houses. Because I don't know anything I can get a higher rate of return on that than that. Especially if it's uh, uh, one of those wholesale houses. For example, um, I paid a, uh, bought a house for $202,000 that I showed you in a previous lesson. And I had I paid for it in cash, but I sold it for two sixty. I mean, it was a month. So, what kind of rate of return is that? I don't know, I, but it's pretty good. I can tell you that, and it's tax free in my IRA. Uh, so, what if I didn't have the money? Well, I could always borrow from a private lender, I guess. But then I'm going to have the expense of the of the interest uh, on top of that. So, 
I mean, once you generate money, you won't have any trouble finding something to do with that money. And you tag that onto your knowledge about real estate, and you'll see there's so many things we can do with cash in the world of real estate to make it a ridiculous rate of return that most of society won't even understand. If your business is not making you rich, you only got three choices, fix it, kill it, or be happy with making a living, which is exactly what most businesses are doing out there. You think about all the mom and pop brick and mortar businesses all over America, and I see it so often, all the time, everywhere I go, uh, either mom or pop or both of them are working in the business and they're just making, you can, you can buy them a good living and 10 years later, they're no different than when they started. Uh, and really not, the business is not producing anything, but, but a living, I mean, cripe, get a job then you don't have to worry about the business. If that's all you want out of life is a, is a living. If you have to show up for work, your business uh, to succeed, it's, it's running you. And that's also exactly the way most of these businesses are run. The owner shows up for work and the business is going to collapse if they, if they don't, because they haven't replaced themselves. So, um, one thing about the business making you money, it's supposed to also create a lifestyle for you that you have time to do the things that you really want to do with your life. And real estate investing is one of the fastest businesses I've seen to operate without the owner and capable of creating large cash flow and wealth very quickly. Now, I demonstrated that to you in a previous lesson where I went through five wholesale houses and you've seen uh, we made $147,000 on those five houses that we didn't own uh, in two months, two months. Now, now, what kind of a business are you going to go out and, and get a brick and mortar business where you sell some product or service where you're going to be able to net 147 grand in, in two months? I don't know, but if you find it, I want you to let me know about it because I want to buy one too. All right, mistake number 15, don't bury cash in real estate. And this will defy conventional wisdom because conventional wisdom wants you to put up a 20% down payment and go to the bank and get a loan. That's not how we buy real estate. Let's say you put up $100,000 down to buy a million dollar property. And I don't even care how you finance the other 900, it doesn't matter. Uh, private financing, uh, FISBO or bank financing or whatever, your $100,000 stays in that property for years until you can sell it or refinance it. So let's call it 10 years, right? Property will grow in value and produce all the other benefits the same with or without the 100 k if you can buy it without using your own money and you can. Now you might not be able to target on a particular property and by that particular property you fall in love with uh, uh, for a million dollars or hundred K down. But the point is you can buy a million dollars worth of property. And if you put a hundred K in it, that money's buried in that property until you sell it. And you're not going to sell it immediately, most likely. <clears throat> and are you refinance it? So if that's true, now let's say you can invest that same hundred K at a 15% rate for 10 years because you didn't bury it in real estate. In 10 years, it's worth $725,000. And that's assuming it's 15% and, it's, and you continually get a 15% rate of return. Well, before I go off of that, you might be saying, well, that ain't going to happen. Where am I going to do it to get a 15% rate of return? Really? What you need to do is increase your real estate education. And that, that question will be answered. When I... Um, buy a house, if I pay cash for a house and I renovate it, I'm going to get many, many times a 15% annual rate of return out of that deal. Let's say I pay cash for a house and I wholesale it and pick up 20, 30, 40, $50,000 like the ones I just showed you. I don't know what that return is, but it is much, much higher than a 15% annual rate of return. When you're a real estate, a 15% annual rate of return ain't going to cut it because you're active. Now, if you're passive and you're just investing in something you don't have anything to do with, 15% is a great return, but we're, we're, we're in real estate. We're active in, until someday we may want to be passive, especially inside your Roth IRA. So if in fact I can take that same hundred grand and make $725,000 on it, that means that it costs me almost three quarters of a million dollars for that seminar. Hello. I hope you got that. If you didn't go back and watch it. We don't bury money in real estate because we can't use that money for anything else as long as it's buried into that real estate. <clears throat> Big mistake. 
Real estate is the vehicle to generate cash, not bury cash into it, which very few people clearly understand when they think of real estate. Real estate means I got to have money and I got to have credit. No, it doesn't. You don't have to have either. It's the vehicle that will get you the money. And frankly, you won't need the credit, but if you have it, great. Everybody wants good credit. I understand that. But uh, the point is you can control millions of dollars worth of assets with a 430 credit score. It's totally irrelevant because you're not going to be borrowing money from anybody. Leverage your brain, not your wallet. That's what we teach in my quick start school, my four day event that we do almost every single month, somewhere around the country. That's made so many millionaires. <clears throat> Mistake number 16, don't spend money then all, and it's already spent. Big mistake people make. They, uh, if your account is empty, that does not mean you're not making any money. On the other hand, if your account's got a bunch of money in it, that does not mean you're making a profit. What it does mean is that that bunch of money is just sitting there waiting for the bill to come in that you got to pay with that cash you got in that account. Okay? And uh, you should know what your break even is before the month starts. So. Uh, don't spend money that's not yours. And I, you know, I, I, I doubt that I even know a real estate investor that doesn't spend money that's not theirs uh, because, you know, the minute it hits your account, you, they think it's your money. It's not. Not. I might be spent. Now when you spend the money, now the bills come in, what are you going to do now? Now you're behind on your bills. And when you get behind on your bills and you're worried about the cash flow, uh, it uh, will destroy your thinking and your ability to actually do great things because you're spending so much time worrying about that miserable cash flow that you created uh, by accident. If your account is flush with cash, does not mean you're making money. Um, if you don't plan for incoming op uh, obligations, it means you may be just robbing Peter to pay Paul. I'll leave you with that one. <laughs> And that only results in a sore Peter. <laughs> All right, mistake number 17. Can't please everyone. In fact, um, if you can please everyone, you're not doing anything. Because we got to stop worrying about what other people think about us. Because if you take a real hard look behind the curtain of their lives, you'd find their lives suck. And why do I care what they think? Take care of the people who take care of you, and you won't care what the rest of the world thinks. <clears throat> Some people live to criticize, condemn, and complain, probably because their life sucks. They don't want to do anything constructive. They just want to tear you down. And if you don't think about it, just watch the politicians every on the, on the news every day. If you could look behind the scenes, you wouldn't like what you see. Ignore them and move on. The more money you make, the less you'll care what the morons think. Don't listen to the morons. Listen to moron. I had to put that in there. Some people complain about the sex and violence on their own DVR. Okay. <laughs> if, in case you missed that, you had to turn it on <laughs> so, to the sex and the violence. So there's nothing to complain about. All right. We'll come back on the next lesson and we'll do 10 or 11 more of them. But I think that's enough to keep you busy for right now. And uh, I'll see you on the next lesson. That's all for this edition of the Mentor Podcast. To connect with Ron and learn how you can attain financial freedom, as well as up-to-date strategies to grow and protect your wealth based on today's discussion, go to www.connectwiththementor.com.